With this video, I want to quickly show you a nice testing library that helps you write concise web tests. So if you have used Selenium in the past, you might have noticed that this is a rather low level API you can control your browser. But if you want to do a little more complex tasks than just getting elements by their IDs, for example, you want to wait on an AJAX call to finish or you want to wait until an element is visible, you find yourself writing a lot of boilerplate code. So to write more concise web tests, there is a nice test library out there, which is called Selenite. So on their GitHub, they have a wiki where they actually explain the difference between Selenite and Selenium. As a first note, they don't claim that the Selenium web driver is bad at all. It's just too low level and they abstract on top of the web driver to make common tasks in the browser more convenient. Here they have several examples where they compare the relevant code you need with raw selenium and how it's done in selenite so here for example opening the web driver and then accessing a page with selenite is just one line where it really shines for example is here ajax support so here they explain how you would have to write this section inside your test with the web driver and with selenite it's just really one line also you see this dollar here so this uh, might remind you of jquery and then you have this readable sentence where you simply express what you are waiting on. And here, for example, you wait on the text area to have a value. And Selenite abstracts all the waiting uh, that needs to happen for you. So let's take a look at a sample project to make use of Selenite. I've prepared a simple Spring Boot project that just uses Timeleaf and the Web Starter. In addition to this, I've included here the Selenite dependency and we can scope it to test. I forgot this so that it's not part of our production jar. The application is quite simple. So we have one book controller that um, returns here. This is an API endpoint that returns a list of books. And as we are exposing a timely view, we need a corresponding controller. And here this is called the bookstore. So whenever someone accesses the bookstore path, we will return here the index template and this is really a simple time lift template where we render a message which has then a button and whenever someone clicks on the button we will then fetch data and here it's the the books um, from our api and then display the books in our browser so let's run the application and see what it does so starting is quite fast if we then switch to the browser and access our bookstore we will then see here a simple HTML page with a headline and this button. And when we access it for the first time, there are no books yet available. But if we hit click here now, fetch books, we will see a beautiful HTML table where we now render the result that we got at a response from our fetch call. And for this, let's now write the web test with Selenite. So therefore, let's create here a new Java class, call it bookstore wt for web test first thing we now need for this test we want to start our application and the whole context so we need the add spring boot test annotation next we want to start our embedded servlet container so here we annotate that we are using a random port and we don't want a mocked servlet environment to later on access our started tomcat so as it starts on a random port the port changes for each test we have to inject it to then access or to then instruct selenite where our page is so therefore we can inject here the port next let's write a first test and this will simply verify that we display the books whenever we click the button so here let's call it should display books and now with selenite it's simply just this open and here we have to make sure that we import open from selenite and here we can either path a relative or an absolute uri let's make it absolute and we are accessing localhost so for your test you could also access your application that is already deployed then we need to concatenate here the port and then finally our view will be available at the bookstore path 
So this is doing everything for us. And as Selenite also ships with the web driver manager, this will download a Chrome driver for us out of the box. So there's literally no setup effort for you. So you don't have to manually download and manage your web driver version. So either you download the Chrome driver or for example, the Firefox driver. So this is happening all under the hood for us. Next, we now have to access the button. So first let's write a condition that we expect there are no books displayed at all. So here we can now use this dollar and we can statically import it. So with Satellite, you can either use um, $1 or double dollars. So with $1, you will always get one element, whereas with double dollars, you would get a list of web elements. So for example, if you request multiple elements by their HTML class, and want to iterate over them, then you would have to use these double dollars. But as we are just interested in one element, we can now use this. Then we have to specify our search criteria. So there we can use this by. There are multiple ways to retrieve the element. Let's use the most simplest one by ID. So inside our application, we have an all books ID. And for now, we expect that it should not exist. So if we recap our view, once we fetch the books from our API, we will then create this table. And while creating the table, we will give the table body the ID all books. So when we first load the page, there is no table at all present in the HTML. So we can write our assertion here that this all books should not exist. Next, we want to actually perform the action while clicking the button. So therefore, again, use this by ID to get access to the button inside the document. And then we can simply call click. So this will then click the button. And next, we can write our second assertion and then we should expect here condition visible. So all of this will now make sure that first there is no table present in the document at all. Then when we click our button, then we should see the table with our books being displayed. So you could also add further assertions here and assert, for example, how many rows are inside the table and if the data is correct. But for now, let's simply go with this. So we will now see here the Spring Boot application starts. And this was now very quick. So if you have seen it, um, Selenite just started a Chrome browser on my machine, accessed the page, clicked the button, and then verified that the output is there. So this we also see here with a passing test. Let's make sure we see a failing test. So if we change here the ID of our table and then rerun the test, we should see a failure. So we'll see here now the browser stays open. So somehow it seems something is not working. That's also what we get inside our logs. So Selenite now complains no such element. It wasn't able to access this element or couldn't find it inside the DOM. And also you see here a timeout. So this timeout is also configurable. So therefore you can access this configuration class of Selenite and then define multiple attributes, but let's now go for the timeout. And here you can specify the timeout in milliseconds. So let's give it a timeout of two seconds. And then if we rerun the test while not fixing our view, we should then see the failure a little bit earlier. This is what we see here. So this way we can override the configuration for the timeout, how long we would to wait for the element to be present. But let's not finish the video with a failing test and fix our view here and then rerun the test and now see that our test is green again. And with just four lines here, we could um, effectively use Selenite to make sure our simple application works as expected.